Greetings, I am Darkling and this is Ark Survival Evolved. Today I'm going to take you through the start to finish construction of a tame pen. This is going to be one of my favourite pens, a single story with an enlarged drop zone. It's going to be a covered pen so it's going to have protection around the outside, just basic wall. So stick around and hopefully you'll learn something. Show you how to build my favorite form of taming pen. I really like this particular design. Uh, I've used it for quite a while now and I do a few variations on it. Uh, first thing I'm doing is I'm marking out my central location. Now this will all get removed. I'm actually not going to be using the foundations I've got in place here. These are all just a guide so I have it snapped. Uh, so I have an idea as to where I'm building from. So that is actually going to be the center of my pen. Now instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to run another line of foundations around the outside. So as you can see you st I still do get foundations jumping around when I'm trying to build faster. People, uh, I've had people say that I don't make mistakes, but I really do. I make a lot of mistakes. You note that there's actually some foundations underneath the beach here. This is previous build. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove some of these central ones just to give myself an idea to up to. A lot of the time I'll leave things in place until I've got a couple of things I have to pick up. If you have to swap between placing and picking up, it tends to drag the process out a little bit. Okay, so now we've got ourselves the outside rung, we're going to remove the rest of the central ones, have a nice big drop area. Excellent. Okay, so the aim that I had here was to make sure there was two foundations width on each side. Now the reason I do this is because one of these sections is actually going to get removed. Move that one. And that's going to be where our gate goes. The next step is to place the door frames around. It's a nice easy step. Structure. I want to be going up about four high just to match the height of a gate. Uh, this is a this is a, what I call a drop style pen. There are multiple styles of pen. Uh, chase pens are quite a popular way of going as well. I'll touch upon a chase pen later on. Okay, so we've got the height now. We're going to need some walls to bank the entrance. Actually, I might just go with door frames. Keep the door frame theme going. Quite often I will actually just use a standard standard wall just to put around the outside, but I'll stick with this for now. Maybe me going for another trip. Place the door frame. I won't bother putting the actual door in it yet. 
here. That looks nice enough. Okay, so as you can see, the door frames, the reason I use these is when you've got creatures that can climb walls, if you've got the door frames there, it does uh, cause them a lot more problems when they're trying to get out. So if you've got the door frames, uh, your chances are of your tame actually getting out of here are pretty slim. Apparently my mouse is on the bricks. There we go. I do find these the most painful things to place out of all the materials in S+. Uh, you have to make sure you're building them from the bottom upwards, which isn't so much of a hassle. You, as long as you plan ahead a little bit, they tend to be pretty straightforward. But um, it be a little bit more pain to get just the way you want them. So as you can see here, I haven't uh, placed the I haven't placed anything in the middle there. The reason for this is I'm actually going to build a scaffold across. So. Drop my door frames off there. You can see it's trying to snap to the top of the gate. I don't particularly want that. The gate's not sitting on an actual foundation, so the height's going to be out. So. Now I'm going to cast two of these. Oh. Okay, excellent. The rest of these should place quite easily. It's getting a bit bright. The reason I do just one row all the way around first is because this gets so much easier to actually place. Oh, looks like we're out of tri roof, so I'm going to go and get some more. So much quicker if I wasn't flying. Okay, so as you can see from the outside, we're starting to get that large drop zone thing going on. I'm actually going to take that out another piece because I quite like having a nice large drop area. And once you've already got the lower snaps in, the top ones aren't usually too bad as long as you get the straight angle on them. Top again. Oh, I'm out again. Be surprised how many of these things you actually go through. Oh. There's a lot of materials when I do my builds. If you build in the try, you tend to go through a lot more in general. Hopefully, I've got enough. Should be. Can't imagine needing any more than that. Now, the other thing I always do when I'm making a taming pen is, depending on what I'm dropping in, depends on how wide apart uh, the outside wall is going to be. Um, I do tend to put a wall around the outside of a taming pen. Um, again, it depends on the location, um, but I do like to have the ability that if something tries to eat me through the wall, I can step back enough to actually not get chewed on. I'm going to take it two foundations out. Not sure where that one ended up.
what it is is because I'm a fair bit off the ground on this spot, I'm actually getting foundation sink. That's okay. I can move around that. There we go. Okay. Oh, still got to do this side, don't I? Excellent. One more in there. Okay, so there we go. We've got my outside run sorted. Now, as you can see, my foundations actually line up with the top of that now. I'm just going to make this next step a lot easier. Now, this section here with the scaffold, I will blend that in a little bit more, um, but I need that there to support the central structure. If I removed uh, either or both sides of that, that whole section will just drop out. So what we need now is some little walls. Uh, I'm going to go with the large walls. I don't need any of that anymore. How many can I hold? Quite a few. So quite a lot of the time I'll use uh, a combination of stone and glass for the outside run. Um, I quite like having a little bit of glass just to be able to see through. Oh, excellent. Um, I've also built naked pins where I don't have the outside section, I'll just run railings along the sides. Again it depends on location but I do recommend if you're in a fairly hostile location if you're going to be taming to stick the outside wall around so if anything does attack you it's not going to go through the wall or the structure on the outside and hit you or your tame. Uh, there's nothing worse than getting halfway through a tame and then having something nibble it through the wall. Okay so as you can see we've got ourselves an outer structure so if you're taming something up you can be sitting here shooting through the walls and you're going to have no trouble at all. So. I'm going to have to put another couple of walls up there and then we're going to add some more door frames. Yep, more door frames. So we're going to lose all of those. I'm going to take half a stack of those and all of those. We may have to add some extra door frames in. Let's see. Okay, so we're going to go into fly again, and so I haven't got barred those. Oops. Oh, I did a good job of that one. And if you saw, I actually snapped into the large wall. I find that a bit of a problem at times. I don't like leaving too many overlapping tile pieces if I can help it. I usually pull them out. I'm going to have to extend that out a little bit. One of the reasons I actually leave this as a naked pin a lot of the time is I quite like the shapeliness. Like right now things are looking very boxy. I like a little bit of shape in my builds. Otherwise you end up with everything being a box build. That's not very attractive at all. Again I'm adding these to stop things from climbing out. and. Because I've built the enlarged drop zone, this is to allow for anybody who's inexperienced at dropping tames, they've got a nice big area. So they can fly over, drop it, and if they miss, it's going to land on this outside run. And it's still going to run around on the outside of this, but 
generally if you start shooting at it it's going to run at you and it'll fall into the hole so things are still going to run quite nicely I'm going to have to add some more door frames in some more scaffold for that front entrance start with that When you're setting up your hotbar, always make sure you rearrange it to what you're using the most of. Whatever is most comfortable for you to press the key on is the best way to go. Uh, so make sure that your uh, speed of building doesn't slow down if you have to look at the keys every time to figure out if you're pressing the right area or whatnot. Come on. Sometimes you really have to fight with these snap points. I'm so glad that Orion Sun made such a good job of actually cleaning them up. I could not go back to vanilla building on anymore. Go. Yeah. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is run some uh, walls below. Just one out. Now, you may have heard me mention this before, when you're actually building uh, with the the ceilings to avoid the dual snap point um, problems, you want to actually add the row of ceiling, uh, sorry, row of walls along the bottom, and then when you snap, you can snap to those lower ones again. I can go from the top one. Nothing at all. On. I usually try and add a couple of walls to see if I've got the right height. Sometimes when you snap them in it looks like they've snapped in the right place and haven't. The reason I've done this is if I hadn't, when I go to add the top layer, these wouldn't have lined up and I'm, I'm a real stickler for getting them lining up properly. So it looks like I've definitely had a problem with the number of door frames I needed. Place those ones together. Because I prefer the aesthetic of it. I think the door frames in there were looking kind of silly. Should now be able to add those on without a problem. I'll have to sort out some more door frames. Okay, so some more door frames to work with. Stick the last row around the top. And again, this is just so that if you do drop something in and miss, it can't just run off the side. And there we go. So now if you fly over with a, an RG or a Quetzal and you're dropping bits and pieces into the taming pen, if you miss, it's not much of a hassle. It'll run around the top and once you start shooting it from the bottom, it should run into the bottom pen. Raymond just popped into the... Apparently I'm starving. We'll get over it. I brought a gate with me. Oh, you're so hard done by. You haven't eaten. 
Woe is me, woe is me. But as you can see from the inside, it's quite a nice big area. Now, I don't think many people will have too much of a hassle dropping into this large space. But um, some people do have problems, especially with the Quetzal, because the Quetzal, the Tames don't drop in the, a very sturdy manner. They, they tend to sort of go off to the side and backwards. But there we have it, that is what I prefer as a standard taming pen. It takes a little bit more to, to make, but um, I really like the results. And like I said, if you remove the sides, it does look very pretty. Um, with the way it's set up at the moment, it's a little bit more unsightly, but the functionality is there, and I bet you'll have a lot more uh, success in dropping your tames into it than some of the other taming pens I've seen. So we'll look at making some more taming pens and hopefully you can learn a few new techniques. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed today's video, if you want to see more remember to hit the subscribe button, there's a link in the description to my discord which also has a number of screenshots from my past and present builds, feel free to stop in and say hi.